Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is TB Skyne, and um, one of the things I've always been very critical of Riot and the League of Legends brand for is not following up and not releasing a lot of lore content, especially for their older characters. Like they, they have a tendency, unfortunately, to create something cool, start a bunch of story threads, and then just kind of leave them hanging uh, for the next five years while they move on to other stuff and do other champions and then don't follow up on them either. So when I saw today that they have finally released a bit of lore content for Darius, I was very pleased, and I was even more pleased when I saw that the content in question was a comic. Now, I am a comic artist, and I've been arguing for a long time that one of the ways that Riot could release a bunch of content and do a bunch of world building and, and explore their characters a heck of a lot with relatively little investment um, uh, and quite a high return on investment was the words I was looking for is through comics, because pictures are word, worth a thousand words, and it's a lot easier to get people to sit down and read a comic than it is to get them to sit down and read a bunch of stories in, you know, just letters and, and writing. So, being that I am very happy that they're doing content for an older character who they've kind of neglected to follow up on, being that I'm very happy that they're doing it in comic form, which is the very thing that I've been asking for for a long, long time, what do you think we are going to be doing in this video? That's right, we're going to be nitpicking the shit out of it. Because I love it. I, I, I nitpick things I love, I criticize things I enjoy, because if I didn't care for them and I didn't enjoy them, what the hell would be the point in criticizing them? You criticize stuff when you want it to be better. Now, but before we go into the comic itself, we're going to go into the credits, because this comic was written by Graham McNeil. Its art and cover was done by Sana Takeda, and I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sure. The editor is Ellie Pyle. The art director is Eric Kanate, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that as well. The letterer is Jacob Bassel, uh, and the production artists are Edette Weincourt and Gabriella Downey, with special thanks to Mark Wade. And we do this because credits are important. Again, I'm a comic artist. I take credit pretty damn seriously and so should you, so we're doing it here. Also, another thing I've been criticizing Riot for for a, a quite a long time now is that they don't put the names of the people who created a lot of their content in the content. Like, there aren't a lot of credits in their animated shorts. There aren't a lot of, you know, this was written by X and edited my Y on their short stories. So it's nice to see that they're doing it with the comic here. The comic itself, as you can absolutely tell, is all about Darius, the Hand of Noxus. And it's called the Blood of Noxus, which I suspect is thematically appropriate. Now, I've had a quick skim through the comic, just very quickly read through it uh, before doing this video, but I haven't, like, dived too deep into it, so I don't have a ton of preformed thoughts, so I'll be sharing those with you as we go along. Now, if you've seen my previous lore breakdown videos, those were mostly about the stories, the written word that Riot puts out, where I read through every single paragraph and criticize the language and the writing as we go along. We're not going to be doing that today, because this is a comic, and I'm not really that interested in criticizing the writing, like, unless something seriously jumps out at me. And I'm not going to be reading all the words aloud for you on the screen, but I'll try to linger over each speech bubble for long enough that you can actually see what's going on. My first comment, though, is that the art is bloody gorgeous. It's got that kind of grown-up, berserk-ish anime style going on to it. Now, I don't know the artist Sana Takeda. I feel like it's a name I've heard before, but I haven't Googled them um, before going into this because I didn't want my impression of this to be colored by my impression of their other work. But, yeah, this... There's just some damn fine line work, and there's a hell of a lot of gorgeous colors on this thing. It's It's got this wonderful washed-out, sort of almost watercolor-ish aesthetic, but it is digital art, I, I can very much assure you of that. And it's also, it's got a nice relationship with sketch lines. Now, you can see the uh, hair on the woman here is very well rendered. Like, all the lines are pretty clean, and even though it's it's frizzy hair and all, it's it's very cleanly rendered. But if you take a look at Darius's hand over here, if I can get my program to do what I want, I have to do this with a scroll wheel, so it's a little bit unwieldy. You can see the hand here is kind of... There's a lot more sketch lines, and it's kind of a lot dirtier. I'm doing air quotes that you can't see. Um, which is an interesting relationship between what the artist chooses to spend time on, what they choose to render very specifically, and then what they choose to kind of scribble their way through. So we're going to jump into the first page here, and I'm just going to slowly scroll, give you all a chance to 
read what's on the screen. Now I'm going by my own reading speed, which is, you know, decently quick. If you are having trouble following along, you can just pause the video. <laughs> So yeah, like I said, it's got this very desaturated, very watercolorish now every uh, thing going on. Everything is kind of gray and brown, at least in in these first pages. It's it's very kind of it gives it kind of a flat look in some instances, which is a little bit of a problem here in this panel. You can see Darius is reaching out uh, with his arm to grab the ledge here, but what's going on with the hand and the thumb here? Um, it's it's a little bit muddled and unclear because the coloring is very flat, and, and when the coloring is very flat, like, you can use color to help deepen the image and make it more clear, okay, that he's reaching into the picture. It's also, there's not a lot of foreshortening, like, his hand doesn't get that much bigger. Uh, so it, it's a little bit hard to see what's going on here. That's a minor nitpick, though, and it's not really that important. This panel here is also a little bit basic and rendered. Like you can see Darius here. He's kind of just a blob. Um, he's not super fully rendered. He's not super uh, bent and posed. And this is a <clears throat> this is an artistic choice that all artists have to make when they do comics. Is which bits do you choose to care about? Like which bits are the really important ones? The ones that the reader is supposed to spend a bunch of time looking at. This panel is not one of them. You can see it cuts off here because it's an action panel. He loses his grip, pow, and then we immediately need to go to the moment where she grabs his arm and saves him. Like, we don't need to spend time looking at the art here. The pose, the expression, that's not important. What's important is he loses his grip, she catches him. And you can see there's a little bit more time spent here rendering the, the grasp between their hands than there is on the hands that are losing their grip up here. And that's something you should look out for in all comics that you read, is to take a look at which panels do the artist care about, which drawings does the artist choose to really care about, do they choose to really pour their heart and soul into, and which ones do they just kind of, this is just a thing we need to get to the next panel. Because that's always the trade-off between, you know, quality and time that you have to do, when, especially when you're on a schedule. <laughs> Um, for example, on this page, the pa the panel that gets the most attention is absolutely this one because it has this gorgeous vista overlooking Noxus. And even then you can see, yeah, there's a lot of care and attention spent making sure this central citadel looks just right. But if you look out here off to the side where the eye isn't likely to go anyway, what you get is, again, the lines are pretty scribbly and, and there's not a lot of color variation because it's not that important, this particular bit. What's important is the two figures in the middle of the screen, uh, the middle of the panel, and the giant citadel that they're looking out at. And it's a gorgeous composition, too, by the way. You can see there's a little bit of a fisheye lens kind of bendy horizon going on, which is nice. It kind of widens the image, I think. And then you've got the two characters with the shadows behind them so that they're, they're literally standing in the light of Noxus, right? The Noxus is shining on them and casting shadows behind them. That's a nice little bit of visual language for you. And you can see there's a lot of rendering going on in their clothes and stuff, so that's very nice. And here again, which panels do they choose to care about? What details do they choose to care about? Here, Darius's face is rendered as fuck. Like, someone spent some time getting all the highlights and all the topography and all the bulges and everything on that right. And then when you go down here to the armor piece here by his chest, it's kind of... It's a little more scribbly. Not quite as much time spent on it. And you can, you can always spot these things around. And the scarf as well is kind of... It's a little bit less rendered like there's a little bit less time spent on it and this i mean this is just my nerdery i love looking at oh where does the artist choose to prioritize because artists get a sense for where the eye is going to go like we we have an understanding of where the eye goes in the drawings that we make and we kind of instinctually understand which bits we need to pay more attention to especially if if, if we were very experienced again I, sana tagada i think i've heard the name before which means they're probably an artist with quite a bit of work behind them but i think that experience shows because again here look at the hand darius has on his axe here that's like what the it's just kind of a gray blob but it's not that important because the important bit is the breastplate and the face and the flowing cape <laughs> and the knights behind him. So, like, spending a bunch of time super over-rendering, this thing to be super realistic, like, it's not really necessary to the panel. And I forgot completely to let you all read through um, the text boxes, although I suspect you've had time um, to see it. And here we introduce to another name that's important, Kileta. Now, Kileta is this girl, who, because she's, like, 
posed back to back with Darius, which indicates a split between the character's um, ideology on the front cover, you can understand, okay, something here is important about his relationship to her because they're facing away from each other, but still both looking at the viewer. They're both looking kind of sad and downcast. Okay, so this is a tragedy. There's all this signaling going on, very cleverly done with just with the visuals, especially because one of the first things we see in the comic is that she saves him which is kind of important to their relationship that he owes her his life, most likely. They support each other. They have that relationship, and it's shown with the hands that they clasp here, down here, and it's it's all very well done, I think. <laughs> now, these knights in the background. Again, you can see someone has spent quite a bit of time and care rendering these faces to give them these very particular expressions. And they look fantastic, to be honest, but again, their armor, yeah, not quite as much time spent on it because it's not as important. The human eye is automatically drawn to faces. We see faces in everything. It's why there's entire subreddits uh, dedicated to just finding faces in things. So <clears throat> if you have a nicely rendered face, the, the, the eye will kind of gravitate towards that and will forgive if the rest of it is not quite as highly detailed. <laughs> And apologies for my sniffing, I'm, I've got a little bit of a cold going on. You can also, this crowd shot here is also gorgeously made because this effect of showing like hundreds or thousands of people standing in bunches, it, it's kind of hard to achieve. Like if you zoom in very close, you'll see that it's kind of, it's really just kind of scribbles. But the thing that makes it pop, the thing that makes it work is all of, you can see the little color variations where little bits of light and little bits of dark are scattered throughout the crowd and a little bit of differences in in the brightness of their armor and sh light shining off the helmets and everything and that helps give it that granular sensation like the sensation that there's thousands of discrete bits standing around here rather than it's just big one big mass you get this sensation of of lots and lots of individuals standing around which is quite nice and you've also got this this lovely um you can see the crowds a kind of arranged in a half circle or a little bit of a triangle that points to Darius in the middle. He's right down here, the general. So again, visual storytelling is telling us, oh, he's not just a warrior here, he's the leader because everything in this picture points to him. And the red banner is standing beside him drawing our eye and indicating this is, this is Darius, this is the guy we need to pay attention to. A little bit of an action shot, some speed lines that, yeah, I mean, yeah. Speed lines like these are a manga and anime trick. Uh, they they <clears throat> very much evolved from, from manga and anime and have since found their way into Western comics as well, I have to say, but that's very much where they come from. And here you can see instead of... When you read a typical manga, it's black and white, so the speed lines will be pure black against pure white, and that gives them this wonderful popping sensation. Like, phew, they spring out at you and they give this fantastic sensation of speed. Here, because this is a color comic, because the aesthetic is very washed out, and and kind of and kind of drab. They have not used solid black lines, and they've painted in some of the sky behind it. Personally, I think the net effect of that is to diminish the effect of the speed line, because to me, the point of the speed line is that it's supposed to indicate that you focus entirely on whatever it is the speed lines are framing. In this case, the speed lines are framing the rock being thrown. You can see they they all kind of point in the same direction as the rock is flying. And they're framing the trebuchet that is throwing the rock. So painting in the sky and the banners and all that stuff, it's like, to me, that's kind of unnecessary. If you want to focus on the speed, which is what the speed lines are for, then you should, I feel like you should cut out the background and just let that speak for itself. Or if you want to focus on the scene of the trebuchet throwing the rock, then you should remove the speed lines because they kind of, I don't think they add very much to this panel. I, I don't think they really work here. Minor nitpick, but you know, that's what you're here for. I hope. If you're not, then you should really stop this video, because that's all I'm going to be doing. <clears throat> Again, pay attention to what the artist is choosing to render. The frame of Darius, standing outlined against the same Noxian Citadel, by the way. This panel is a callback to this panel. Standing on a cliff, looking at the Noxian Citadel, and you can see that it's pretty much exactly the same construction. They've even got that fish islands curved horizon thing going on as well. And something else I'm noticing more and more is the texture of the paper, um, which is something that's, that can be kind of easy to miss. But if you take a look, especially up here, and the way that all these, there's these little 
almost like stains on the paper. This is easier to see if you go look at the comic yourself and zoom in, but you can see that there are these little shapes of stains on the paper. That's a texture I suspect that has been overlaid on the paper to give it more the effect of being like it's like it's an old scroll, like it's an old like rough piece of parchment rather than being a completely clean digital canvas, which is what it actually is. And that's that's actually quite a nice effect because it's it's subtle enough that it takes you a little while to notice it. The trouble with overlaying textures is that they can overpower the image and, and kind of wash out all the detail. They don't do that here, which I think is quite nice. And I think I've got an okay pace where I criticize each panel um, or review, uh, critique each panel in turn. And you probably have time to read the text boxes in between all my rambling. So that should work fine again. Darius, very highly rendered. The Citadel here, very specifically, like, it's, it's, it's scribbly, sure, but it's also very clean. It's very strictly outlined against the horizon so that we can see, oh, wait a minute, that structure looks familiar. Oh, it's the same building they were looking at before. So this has some importance to the relationship between the two characters. That's clever. Again, Darius, extremely well rendered, extremely stands out a lot in the picture because he has this big bright red cloak as well as a lot of highlights going on on his ar axes and armor. Whereas the knight's kind of running, you can see this guy down here, his armor is just kind of scribbled on without, it's not like every single bit is, is perfectly rendered. And again, always notice which bits draw the eye, which bits have the artist chosen to focus on, because that also tells you a lot about the storytelling that they want to do in the panel. Speaking of storytelling, this panel here, not a lot to say about it. Uh, it's, again, less rendered than, for instance, this one. Here, Darius' face is like, you could, you could, like, trace the lines of every groove and wrinkle on his face here. Here, yeah, it's, it's still rendered, but it's not nearly as much. Because, again, this panel is not that important. The important part about this panel is that he's looking at the standard of Noxus over here like he's literally looking at the next panel um but he's also looking away from the viewer he's looking off to the side which indicates oh he's not engaged with the action here he's, he's looking at something else he's thinking about something else because he's going into a memory and again that kind of acting is kind of important to tell the reader what the hell is going on because if Darius looked like he was just about to go into action or he was focused on something that was actually happening or he looked like he was speaking you can give the reader the wrong impression that they're supposed to care about the action in the here and now and not think about the relationship of what's happening now to the relation uh, in relation to what's happening previously, which is what this next panel sets up ultimately because it focuses on the symbol of Noxus itself. This is a flag. It has no character. It's a cutaway to something that seems completely unrelated to the action as being presented. Like he's about to storm a fortress. So why are we looking away to just stare at this banner for a bit? Again, imagine in a movie if the camera had panned over to kind of look at a banner that was waving in the wind. That's the kind of thing you do right before you transition to a different shot, which is what we do when we hit the button and head back to 22 years ago. And also notice the color differences. Like I said at the start, the past is much more washed out and brown and kind of desaturated than the present, which has a lot more color going on, even though it's not, you know, exactly bright and cartoony. And again, we go back to this washed out, almost sepia toned, like it's an old photograph kind of look. And we start finally getting some di uh, some dialogue going here. <laughs> With uh, young Draven, young Darius, and young... that name I keep forgetting, Kileta. Which is a weird name and hard to pronounce. And I'm just going to let you read uh, the, te the dialogue text for a moment. Um... Before I move on to do a little bit of critique, I don't think I have that much to say about the first two panels. There's not that much going on, but I, I do have a few thoughts. All right, that'll have to be time enough. Now, the first thing I notice about this first panel is there is a tangent. And a tangent is a visual uh, thing that can happen, which can be problematic for, especially for a comic page, but for all illustration. A tangent happens when a line aligns with another line. A, a, lines, a line, a line, a line, a line. A line aligns with another line. Try saying that ten times fast. And you can see it here by Draven's shoulder. You can see how his shoulder, it curves down here, but it kind of also, it's almost like the line continues into the, the 
the curve of the into the uh, edge of the roof here right and you can see how on his chin here it's kind of like the corner of the chin there also kind of continues into the roof here now this is a minor thing but over here notice how it kind of it almost looks a little flat like his body could be part of the roof and it's not a huge problem here because it's off to the side and the eye isn't drawn to it. But that's the kind of thing you have to be very careful of in comics because the wrong tangent at the wrong time can completely mess up the viewer's idea of what the hell is going on in the panel. And here it's just a minor little niggle that, that I mean, if, if I was the editor, I would have gone, oh, maybe you should move this up a little few pixels and maybe change his pose a little or something. <clears throat> As it stands, not really a big problem. Lovely use of lighting here, by the way. Note, it's very subtle, but notice how you get this bright sunlight kind of glaring through here that then turns into softer shadows as it hits the courtyard. It's it's, it's all very nicely done. The rendering is, is fantastic in this comic. In the next panel, we finally get some dialogue acting going on, and you can see that there's something going on here already, right? Draven is all tension. He's all tense. He's ready to jump. He's kind of, he's all pushing himself off the roof like, ah, I want to get those guys. He's he's very intent on what's going on down there. What, what Darius is kind of more lazy, <clears throat> at least in his posture. He's kind of lying down. He's resting. He's kind of looking off. He's like, oh, kind of sick of things. And uh, the the Kileta over here is, is more neutrally concerned and looking at what's going on down it. But you can see there's a there's definitely an attempt to storytell who these characters are. He's unconcerned and kind of just bruh. And he's like, mm, I'm gonna find a way to kill these guys. And she's more, oh, I'm concerned about the thing that is happening here. Which helps distinguish the three characters. If they had all had the same pose exactly, which you could justify by saying that they're all lying in the same way looking over the edge of this roof then they would be more like uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie uh, from the Disney cartoons, like triplets almost. They would be less distinct and less interesting to look at. So that's very nicely done. Minor pet peeve, when a character is speaking in a panel, their mouth should be open. This is just me. Like, tons and thousands and thousands of comics have lots of panels where the characters aren't opening their mouths, but dialogue is somehow coming out of them anyway. I get annoyed with this because I see speaking as an opportunity to characterize, an opportunity to show the body language of the character, and, and if you if you just kind of miss that, it's, it's a bit of a waste. This panel here, mm. well, not a lot to say about this panel, except, again, there's a tangent. You can see the corner of Draven's knife here, it just pokes up against the edge of the roof, and again, that flattens the image. If it had jutted out over the edge of the roof, it would have given it much more depth to the image, but because it kind of ends there, you kind of get this... It, it flattens the image, unfortunately, which, again, minor, minor nitpick, but it's the kind of thing I care about. These two characters, by the way, again, you can see the armor here, not really rendered at all. You've basically just scribbled the details on there, but it works for two reasons. First of all, it works because it fits the aesthetic of the comic. The aesthetic of the comic is this kind of washed out watercolor, indistinct almost kind of kind of aesthetic. So you don't really need sharp, delineated, clear lines all the time because the, the aesthetic can carry indistinctness. And the faces, like look at the faces, the rendering on the worry in the old man's face is great and the sternness of this mustache man's expression over here very nicely done and here we get a again the difference between darius's face up here where you can see yeah he has some facial features but they're not really explored and then here where everything comes to the fore you can really see what the character looks like because again here the expression the the reaction of Darius to the thing that is happening is important to us, so we need to pay attention to it. And what's happening is that Draven is being an, a cocky little idiot, which is entirely consistent with his character. <clears throat> so, anything to say about these panels? Not necessarily. I'll, I'll have less and less to say, I think, as the comic goes on, because, you know, a lot of the stuff I comment on is basic, and I don't want to make the same comment a hundred million times. Yeah, not a lot. I think the acting could be a little stronger here. I, there's a lovely thing where you can see the shadow that curves across Draven's body kind of follows 
his pose, so it, it almost cuts straight across him, even though it's he's he's curved, and that's that's it's kind of a nice effect. I would have liked to see him coiled up a little bit more, like more ready to strike, like a bit more expressive. Um, right now he looks a little bit stiff, at least to me, uh, but that's a minor nitpick, and it's the same in this panel here. Like I feel like you could do more to kind of wind up and and make his pose a little bit more extreme <clears throat> to to show the strength with which he's about to throw a knife. But again, minor nitpick. I also think the knife here, here's where I would have spent a little more time on the knife because the knife is very important to the thing that's about to happen. He's about to throw the knife at the Noxian officer and that kind of kickstarts the, the, the narrative of, of the whole thing. So the knife here is extremely important, but instead the focus is very much on Draven's overconfident, shitty expression. Because he's an overconfident little shit boy who deserves to get his face punched in. That's his character. That's not me making a commentary. That's just his character. And here, I would have rendered a lot more on the arm and the knife to bring focus to those two parts, because I think those are more important to the scene. But again, that might just be me. Here, another uh, set of anime effects. Um, with the speed lines going on, and also this the light streak. Now, if you've watched a lot of anime or read a lot of manga, you will recognize that panel where you zoom in on the character's face and there's this streak of light, of light across the panel that indicates, oh, they have noticed something. They're seeing something. They're, they're suddenly paying attention to something. I think he could have strengthened it here by making a sudden hit turn with some speed lines, like to show that he's suddenly turning his head towards Draven, that he realizes what's going on. But, you know, there's my number nitpick. I also think that that effect works a lot better if you actually use complete black with a white line across it rather than this very textured look. But it works fine enough to communicate what's going on. I think it could just have been a little bit stronger. This panel, I have to say I'm not a, a huge fan of the execution here because you can see there's this white desaturated streak to show the curve of Draven's throw, right? And then there are these... but it kind of, it's in conflict with these speed lines, because all these speed lines kind of cut across the movement of the arm instead of following the movement of the arm. Which, and, and they kind of seem to zoom in here. Like, the, they're zooming in on this brick and this indistinct smear of Darius's, of, of Draven's arm, and I don't really think it serves the action. The action that's going on is that Draven is throwing the knife. So I think a lot more attention should have been paid to the curve of the arm and to and to maybe play some more speed lines that followed the arm instead of cutting across it like this to kind of strengthen that that motion is the thing that we care about the most right now. Also here, the foreshortening, I think the hand should have been a little bit bigger or something because it looks a little awkward in the way that it, it kind of looks like he's got a stump arm with a hand on the end of it, which again, when you're working with such desaturated colors, it can be really hard to make that kind of thing work because you can't use strong colors as much to to show the depth of the image but here i think the hand should have been bigger probably uh to to really get the the motion across i also think darius's expression could be a little stronger like he, there could be some more lines some more like more like he's shouting loudly like he's scr scrunching his face up and really shouting like no rather than just dragon no because it's not, it's not really a fear expression that he's got here. He's not really worried, I don't think, when what's actually going on is that like his idiot little brother is throwing a knife at a soldier who can kill them both. Again, an action panel, and again, I have some criticism about the action in that we get that the knife, the speed lines here work perfectly because they focus our eyes on the knife hitting the staff. But what we're not really getting, I don't think, is that Draven didn't miss. The commander moved and blocked the knife with his staff where i would have put some speed lines maybe on the commander sideways to show that he's moving to the side or strengthened these speed lines here to show more clearly that he's moving his staff into the path of the knife to block it minor criticisms it doesn't really it's not like the panel doesn't work but you know nonetheless this is a nice angle on the next panel, uh, again with the fisheye lens effect, which gives this this greater sensation of it's almost like we're lying on the ground with the kids, which I think is is quite fantastic, uh, and and that that helps us. By the way, that in terms of storytelling, that helps us sympathize with the kids and be frightened or worried about the soldier because he's above us, he's looking down at us as the reader. We're looking up at him. 
So I think that works quite well. And then there's the reverse, right? Aren't you a little young to be assassins? And then he's just a boy. He didn't know any better. When they, the, when, when the soldier, the commander is speaking, we're seeing him from the kid's perspective. When the kids are speaking, we're seeing them from the commander's perspective, which is interesting. That, that, that's a nice little shot, reverse shot effect is what you probably call it in film. <laughs> Draven being a complete moron as usual. Uh, yeah, not a lot to say about this panel. Again, not a lot of rendering has been paid attention to the bodies of the kids. You can see that they're, they're kind of scribbly. They're not necessarily fully correctly proportioned, I don't think. But it's not really important because the important part is this. It's their eyes, their faces, and the light that falls on them. To frame them against this, uh, the commander here in the bottom right of the frame. Also, I love the effect of the circular um, brickwork, which the kids are sitting kind of in a half circle in front of him, almost like they're his disciples, right? Which kind of sets up that he's about to recruit them into the Noxian army, spoiler alert, that he's about to make them his pupils, essentially. So that, that's, that's a nice little effect. And Draven's expression here is just lovely. <laughs> he, looks exact, he looks exactly the right kind of shitty... Arrogant little boy. I can take on the world kind of thing. Again, here I would have rendered the knife some more because it's a focus. Like, the first thing my eye uh, jumps to when I look at this panel is the knife, then Draven's face, then the commander, and then Darius uh, looking worried down here. <laughs> so I would have rendered the knife a little bit more, made it more important that the commander is holding up the knife. What do you fight for? He asks Darius, uh, Draven, in order to get to get a commitment to an ideology out of him, in order to get him to think about his actions, and that's symbolized in him holding up the knife and asking, "What is this for? Like, what's the point of having this knife?" So I would have rendered the knife some more in this panel. Lovely little panel break. Um, this is something that a lot of comic artists, myself included, struggle with: is to break the panel to let something inside the panel exceed the boundaries of the panel. And it's done very well here. There's a little white outline around the character which kind of separates him from the panels that are essentially behind him. And that's... that's I love seeing that used effectively because it's not its not like he's dominating the page, but he's kind of he's kind of breaking out of the boundaries, which makes him look bigger. Like, that's the net effect, that he looks bigger than the panel, which means he looks bigger than, than the frame of the comic. He looks bigger than the comic itself, in a sense which helps make him more important uh, when he's delivering something that's very important that he's recruiting them. And again, the closed mouth while delivering dialogue. Stop doing that. Open their mouths. Let them talk. They're not telekinetic protoss. You're soldiers of Noxus now. Indeed. I kind of like a lot about this panel. You can see there's a... For the first time, I think, really... In this whole damn comic, some real green is finding its way into the picture. Draven's armor, the, the sky, has a slightly more greenish hue to it, and it's kind of nice. It kind of balances the very brown and red and gold and gray that's been going on a lot. I, I, I kind of like that. And that change in color, which I think kind of echoes across... You can see there's a lot more blue going on on these pages. Even though we're still in the past, we're still in a memory... Of a, of a previous time, you can see that there's this blue color scheme helps separate this memory from this memory, but it also separates it from the present, which, if you'll remember, looks more like this. But it's much closer to the color scheme that, that affects the present, so you can see that it's closer in time, right? And I'm not sure if that's intended or if it's just the artist intuiting it. Either one is possible, but I think it works quite nicely. Again, I'm going to give you a little time just to read what's going on here. And then we're going to talk about this face. <laughs> All right. This panel is not important. This one right here. It's not really important. The important thing about this panel is to show a broken wall and then have the dialogue on top of it to, to show what the characters are saying. By the way, lovely little comic technique. Using different colors in the um, speech bubbles or the boxes that contain their dialogue 
in order to show which character is speaking. The green is Draven, and we can tell because green armor all over the all over the place. Whereas uh, I believe the, and you can see here the brown is for Commander uh, Captain Cyrus back here, um, and that brown and gold also mirrors the very brown and gold vi vision of the past that that he's from, which is quite nice. And I think the red and white, uh, the, the red and black here is Darius, but I think it could also... No, actually, it's Killette. At least I think it's Killette. Is it Killette? I think it's Killette. She's brown-haired now when she used to be very, very blonde. Um, so I guess it's Killette. That's a, that's a minor criticism I have for the comic, is that sometimes... I found it a little bit hard to tell which woman was supposed to be which woman. And I have another point a little bit later down the line about a thing that didn't quite work for me. Anyway, this face! I keep being reminded of it. This is so well done. I can't really overstress how well done I think this expression is. And indeed, all of Draven's expressions are just really nice in this con. They're really, really good. When you do realistic rendering like this, like when you really put highlights on the nose and, and show the topology of the face and then show all the bumps and all everything, it is very, very, very easy to get very stiff expressions, because real faces don't really do comic book expressions. We all know this. But it also means that the more realistic you make something, the harder it becomes to exaggerate things, to make them look more cartoony. And this is just a lovely... Draven here especially is a lovely example of how you do that while also keeping a very realistic-ish rendering style. And that's just really well done. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. And it is a Killette's expressions are quite nice <laughs> when she's arguing with Draven. There's a lot of character building going on here as well. Where you can see Darius is kind of the quiet, thinky guy. Doesn't say that much, but he's there. Whereas Draven likes to talk, like, a lot. And she likes to be the voice of reason. Or she is the voice of reason. She's the one who comes up with a more cautious strategy, the more careful strategy, because let's not all get ourselves fucking killed right now, where Draven is like, fuck that, I want to charge into battle. And then Darius is the quiet guy who has perhaps the final word, as he indeed does here. I'll give you a little bit of time to read the dialogue here, just in case you haven't already. As I talk about, this is just... I think the artist is a big fan of Draven, because every time Draven is in a panel... He gets a lot of the attention, I feel. Lovely rendering of his armor here. I think the hair could use a little bit more lighting and shading, perhaps, to bring it more in line with the rest of him, but that's a minor nickel. Next page. Again, Draven is the focus. Draven has almost all of the color um, out of all the characters here. And he's very much centered, because you can also see the lines of the image... This leads us down here, leads us down here, leads us to him, leads us down here, leads us to his speech bubble, which leads us to him, and the line of the soldiers' heads leads us to him. Compositionally, this is just very well done, because you can see the, that he's... Basically, if you drew... Um, um, what the heck is it called? A horizon line, and put the perspective... and mapped out the perspectives of the image, they all center on Draven, which is a nice little compositional bit of, of, of visual trickery. And the same thing here, the arrows streaking by, frame, very much frame driven, and he, he has all the color, so he draws all the attention, whereas everything else is a little bit more understated, and nothing really points to it. And also he's just in the center of the image, which always makes him the center of the image, that's a tautology. And again, <laughs> such a lot of expression. I, I think... His smile could be bigger here. I think they could actually have pushed this a little bit further. But I think they wanted him to look badass rather than look kind of comically arrogant. And here the action works better, I think. You can you remember how I had some criticisms previously about how showing like a character swinging something or moving. Here you can see the speed lines are all behind Draven. There, nothing overlaps him. Nothing distracts from his action pose. And that's when these um, washed out white streaks can really do their job of drawing our eye to the axe being thrown backwards as it breaks an arrow mid-flight. 
So that's all very nicely done. And again, the panel right above him, not really important because the important thing about th this bottom half of the page is Draven breaking out of the panel down here and he dominates the entire compass. Like we get this, this panel is just to show us, oh, arrows are being fired. So there's a little bit of attention paid to the bow and the hand, but the rest of it is very, very scriptly. Not really that important. The important part is Draven showing off knocking arrows out of the sky because he's immortal and vulnerable and he's gonna kick all the fucking asses and shit. Again, a very nice action shot. Again, this white streak does a great job of pulling our eye, giving us the impression that you have this swing of a slice over where he kills a dude probably and knocks a couple more arrows out of the way kind of being the vanguard of the whole thing it's also storytelling wise it's also kind of important that draven actually goes first he's trying he's trying to be in front of people because he's hungry for glory but he's also knocking arrows out of the air protecting the soldiers behind him which gives us the impression that oh maybe he's kind of a competent soldier actually and not just a bracky moron which is kind of important for his characterization Again, this panel, not very important. We just need to know torch, fire stuff going on. Which sets up the fuse. Which sets up the explosion here at the bottom. Uh, where they breach the wall. Again, lovely action shot. This really works. I would have liked maybe to see... the One of the axes actually flying. Because I think what he's supposed to be doing here is throwing one of his axes... Slashing open these two assholes. Um, or slashing op open this guy. But because the axe isn't actually in the image, it's, it's a little bit unclear what exactly he's throwing. Um, that's a minor nitpick. Again, the fuse is important, so there's been some time spent on rendering the smoke and all the rubble around it and the fuse itself. This next panel is transitional, so it's not that important. So the soldiers just kind of look like these big lumbering blobs without that much motion to them, because we just need that to get to here, where we see the fuse going on a little bit more, and then ba-boom! EXPLOSION! As we can see, Draven being thrown back, shrapnel flies everywhere. I think a little bit more shrapnel would have been nice in this picture to kind of really show just how much shit gets thrown around, but the explosion itself is wonderfully rendered. Lots of use of night, nice use of color. The speed lines draw all the attention to it, which is right and nice. And you can see the, those little plumes of orange that kind of rise up out of it. That's nice. And an explosion in a movie is a, is a good thing to cut on. Like, you can use the sound, like, and then you cut to some cut to black and fade into another scene or something. That works very well in movies. They kind of attempted here to make a cut on the explosion that doesn't quite work for me because it, it doesn't quite resolve. I think I would have had a another panel of Draven's face to show his reaction to the thing and the grin like ha I fucking did it because I'm the best kind of thing to, sh to, to, to kind of resolve what happens here and to remind us that no no Draven is important to to this image as well and that could help transition us into the next scene which is nine years ago where we see Sawnite chemicals being uh, put to work against enemies of Noxus and again, I'm going to give you a little time to read some of the dialogue. That should do. Uh, anything to comment on here? Again, the angle. A lot. Of, there's a lot of great camera angles going on here and I, I air quote again because it's not a camera there is no camera it's just the way it's it's posed but the camera angles on these panels is are excellent again you can see everything in the panel pointing us to the characters in the center the smoke and the and the the buildings all pointing us towards the characters here that's a nice bit of composition it helps draw the eye in the right direction imagine if Darius had been over here like over to the side, nothing would point to him, everything would point to her, so we'd look at her instead and consider her the main character of the panel, but the main character of the panel is their relationship, is the two of them. And again, lovely little bit of angling here, you can see the ground is very present um, in these panels, which helps give us the sensation, again here, 
we're lying on the ground as well, the us as the, the observers along with the dead villagers or dead citizens of whatever the hell this place is that got murdered with chemicals. So it puts us in the position of, of the spectator from the perspective of the dead people. You could easily put the camera above them and have them walking through the streets instead, but they choose to put us down on street level. Which which I think is a very nice touch. This pendant she picks up, by the way, lovely little bit of, bit of storytelling. She and Darius are, are central to this image, but... The image does lead us, like, the first thing we see is them, and then we get drawn down here to see that she picks up this locket. And then in this panel, she's not the main character at all. The locket is. It's right in the center. And it's framed love, in a lovely way by the shadow and her and then the speech bubble. Kind of curving around it. And because it's gold and, and a little bit bright, a little bit shiny, we're kind of drawn to it, which I think is a lovely effect because the locket is kind of important, apparently. That's that's what the page is telling us, anyway, because we don't see her face. If her face was in the picture, our eye would be drawn to that immediately, but since it's not, we look at the colorful, shiny thing. And again, back to their relationship is the important thing in this panel. And there's light between them, um, which... I don't know if that's, it's intended to be, but it could be a color metaphor for the brightness of, of you know, their affection for each other. Uh, not sure if that's intentional, but whether it is or not, it's quite nice. Now, I've, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of her armor design. Uh, just because boot plates are dumb, and I have a video on my channel about that. Uh, but, you know, it's it's not it doesn't distract me too much. Here's Cyrus again, grown somewhat older with a gray mustache this time. That horse could maybe have used a little bit more rendering because it just kind of looks like a little blob. It, it doesn't entirely look like he's riding on it, I think. So maybe a little bit more attention could have been paid to that, but it's not really that important to the picture either, so it doesn't matter that much. <laughs> Here, literally words are coming between the two. Which is going to be important later because, again, the comic is about their split. And I wonder if, like, that could just be coincidental. Like, there's some space here, let's put a speech bubble there so we can get the words in. That might be why they did it, but I'll keep an eye out to see if, if there are more times where words come between them. Because look, that would be a very clever visual metaphor. But yeah, I don't have a ton to say about these panels that I haven't said already. So we can just kind of let you read the dialogue, and then we'll move on. That should do you. Again, lovely, lovely Draven expressions. And I'm going to let you read the dialogue, and then we're going to move on. All right. A couple of things about this panel. Draven again steals the show with all of his expressions because they're just so freaking good. Um, I'm a little... Draven is a very muscular guy, as we can clearly tell from this panel, but then here he kind of becomes this indistinct childish blob, which kind of doesn't work for me. That's a minor thing, uh, but I think a little bit more attention could have been paid to rendering his body out here uh, to make him look more distinct next to Darius. Minor little... Minor little niggle. And here, this panel... I've already seen people on Twitter thirsting over this panel, and I can see why. I can see the appeal, uh, even if it's not necessarily for me. But yeah, I, I think the artist knew exactly what, what the people wanted on this, on this panel. Very nicely done. And like I said earlier, I as we go on, I'll, I'll have less and less to say about each panel, uh, each page. 
because yeah you know but there is again you can see the very 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 clear color shift 19 years ago everything is very much in the gray uh, in the in the sepia toned golden brown kind of but in the closer we get to the present the more blues the more coldness sneaks into the image the more cold colors the blues and the greens Whereas the, the past looks warm, the past looks golden. <laughs> Literally, the past is golden and the present is more silvery. Anyway, uh, yeah, read, read, read the dialogue on the page. Read it quickly, because I, I, I want to speed up a little bit. This video is already 50 minutes long and there's lots of pages to go. Yeah, there's 22 pages. We're on page 13, so might want to speed up a little bit. Naked Darius, I think, again, a little bit of lovely fan service. And again, the shift, you can... The, the colors... Using warmer colors for the past and colder colors for the present, it's not just like, oh, that's a nice little visual thing. It also helps comprehend the comic, because you can see this panel is in the past, that panel is in the present as Darius picks up a rock, this panel is in the past. And the colors help guide our understanding of what happens when. And this could literally be the cover of any romance novel. Past, present, past, present. Which is lovely. Uh, it's a lovely intercutting. It also helps heighten the drama, because what's happening here is Darius throws a rock into the pond, skipping it like he's a child or something, and we have an assassin approaching with a blade. And here the blade is highlighted with white. Like light is shining off it, which is which is nice. It, it tells us what the blade is for. It's for killing people. Specifically this guy who's framed, literally framed, by the two trees and the water. And from a cin cinemato cinematography perspective, or an editing perspective, if, if you're watching this as a movie, this scene would play out where we see images of, of the past, and then we kind of cut to the present, and we see the guy with a knife approaching, and then we cut to the past again, and then we see the guy with a knife approaching, cut to the past, like you'd have this wonderful rhythm dynamic going on that would heighten the tension and heighten the tension, and it works very well in the comic as well. This panel, I think, could be a little bit better composed, because it's all about Darius in this panel. He, he takes up most of the space, he's center frame, he has all the color. Now, the, the bright gleam of the blade is supposed to draw us to the blade and help us understand, okay, the assassin is pretty damn close now. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite... I don't think it quite manages to do it. I was still kind of too focused on Darius when I first saw this page. Um, so when I was skimming it, I looked at Darius and then looked down here and then I was, oh, she, wait, hang on. Why did she suddenly drive an axe to the back? Oh, right, she was in the previous panel. It wasn't a weird cut for no reason. Anyway, here comes the Draven axe impaling the poor assassin right in the back. And once again, I'm going to let you read some dialogue. Right, this page, again, I don't have a lot to say about it that I haven't already kind of pointed out. But notice how there's a banner of Noxus kind of cutting the two brothers off from each other. And I think it's supposed to signal that there is a bit of a schism between them, like that there is a division between them, as well as a division between them and uh, Kilet, who has betrayed Noxus. Which is something I think the visual storytelling... This page is supposed to set it up, that she's starting to have qualms about what Noxus is doing, what Noxus is, and, and the price of serving Noxus's agenda. And, and these pages do an okay job of it, but it is a little bit jarring to me to go from oh, they used to be lovers and have sex in lakes to all of a sudden they're in front of a fortress threatening to murder her after he has been almost been murdered by her assassin. It's I, I think you could have used a little bit... There could have been a little bit more time spent showing her disillusionment with Noxus growing while Darius becomes more committed and so the rift between them grows wider. But that's 
if you only have 22 pages to do it, well, then that's the time you're going to have to go to do it. Yeah, not a lot to say about these pages, either compositional or anything. I think this character here, who's going to be very important before the end, the black-haired uh, girl in the robe, could have been centered a little bit more in some of the pages. I think it's supposed to be kind of a surprise when the thing that happens, happens in that she's really out of focus. She's not the focus of any of the panels that she's in, really. She kind of sits in the background, in the shadows. Even when she's introduced, right, this is my second-in-command, Invetia. Still Kilet, who's the focus of the panel. She's still the focus of the picture. Anyway. Do read some dialogue. Anyway, here's a little bit of clever writing that I want to point out. Um, Darius and Draven have just presented the head of the assassin that Kilet sent to Kilet in a bag. And then here the dialogue goes, he died, her son died, fighting for Noxus in the Freljord. The savages sent his head back to General Korlak. I am sorry, I didn't know. And this panel, everything, the gaze of the characters, the lines of the wall, and and the, the framing of, of the ground here, and has us, leads our eye, even the progression of the dialogue, right? We go from here to here, and then the natural progression is to go further down, centers around the head in a bag that Darius has just sent back to her, right? So the writing and the art are both telling us that she thinks Noxus is the same, is, is the same kind of honorless mockery of its own ideals that the barbarians are. The barbarians who cut off the head of her son and send it back to the general, and Darius and Draven who cut off the head of her assassin and sent it back to her. Like, there's a strong parallel being set up, which helps us to understand her resentment towards them. Now here, I'm going to let you read the dialogue, but I have some comments about some more general stuff about the comic. Right, so now that you've read it, first of all, the expressions are still not strong enough, I don't think. Like, I think, like, like they do such a great job of exaggerating Draven's expressions, making them a little bit more comic book-like, making him appear a little bit larger than life. And then you see, this is where the two former lovers have a discussion about, like, their foundational, their fundamental ideological beliefs about the world, and the expressions are just kind of understated kind of not a lot going on like she's clearly angry and sad but uh, I think they could have been stronger and it wouldn't really have have conflicted with the with the aesthetic they could have been stronger they could have shown more of the pain that both of the characters are supposed to be going through but other than that it's just well composed well rendered very nice nothing really to say I will say I honestly mean this is a little bit of a criticism that it does seem that every single time Draven is on a page, his face gets all of the attention. Like, there's clearly been more time spent rendering him in some of these panels. Look at this! Compared to that, compared to this, like, so I think the artist is a little bit too much a fan of Draven, maybe. <laughs> and really likes rendering him and drawing him. I'm not 100% sure if it's true, but, like, it, it seems to be a theme. Anyway, read the dialogue, please. <laughs> Draven's expression is still so good.
This panel, mm, I feel like the city and the gates could have used a little bit more time drawing them out properly, because as it stands, that's a little bit shoddy. That feels a little bit too scribbly and shoddy. When it's supposed to be a landscape wide shot of action, I just kind of set up what's what's happening um, other places in the scene than with the characters. I, I feel like a little bit more time could have been spent there. And again, the expression here, it's supposed to be kind of this disbelief and defeat kind of face going on. And I think that could, been, could have been pushed a little bit further. And Darius's resignation to the inevitable could also have been pushed a little bit further. Anyway, I uh, hope you're reading the dialogue because I'm going to scroll down now. Again, this expression, I feel like it should be stronger. I feel like it should be more exaggerated. Now, all this talk about expressions, I'm the kind of guy who, in comics at least, will almost always value more expression over more realism or over more rendering or over more detail. Because I think that's more important to the format, to, to the genre of comic books. But, you know, to a certain extent, that's just me. Um, oh, something interesting to notice is that as these three characters are once again put together, talking to each other, notice how the color hue of the page, you have the brown, the golden light of the past, is present everywhere, every time they're talking to each other. And it's coming from the sunset, sure, but it's a deliberate choice. You have the golden sun kind of setting as the blue sky starts to show, slowly assert itself. You can see this. there's constantly this conflict between golden browns and then just a little bit blue, a little bit of blue in the sky, kind of forcing its way in to the image. And again, if you remember the color setup that they have, blue and cold means present, gold and, 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 and brown means the past. So literally in the colors here, the past and the present are fighting. Like their past relationship is fighting against their present conflict. And that's just a very clever little thing to do with the colors. And and maybe a lot of readers don't notice it. I but I I noticed it. I quite I quite like it. I think it's very clever. Again, I'm asking you to read the dialogue and again i have to comment this is where Dari according to darius this is where uh Kileta breaks where she, where she loses her spirit her will to serve noxus when her arm is severed because it's infested with poison from the alchemist that is singed but here she's begging to die because she's in so much pain and she doesn't want to lose her arm she would rather die than be a cripple and her expression really kind of doesn't say that it doesn't say a person screaming in the worst pain that they have ever experienced in their lives begging to be let out of their misery it's more like ah, i'm upset that you didn't do the dishes that's kind of more what this expression says to me than holy fuck i am fucking dying over here this is where i think the expression should have been pushed a lot harder so yeah but again not a lot to say about these these pages that I haven't set before. As again, we return to the present. And here, interestingly, the golden light of the past, the, the reminiscence. You can see the blue is still present here as, as the reality is forcing its way into their relationship and forcing them into conflict, right? And I hope that you're reading the dialogue um, also. But at the moment that she dies, betrayed by her own second-in-command, the moment she's murdered, the light of the, that golden light just flares up. It explodes. And everything becomes colored in it. Because in this moment when she dies and Darius, holy shit, the woman I used to love is dying in front of me. Everything 
becomes about their relationship, their past relationship, their history together. Their past together becomes the only important color symbol in the whole goddamn thing. And that thing, I think that's very clever. Like, this is where the color scheme of the past is most present is when Darius sees the woman he loves die in front of him because he serves Noxus. That's the sacrifice that he has to make. And the same way that she had to sacrifice her arm and her son. Anyway, by the way, speaking of sons, it means giving your blood and your life. It means feeding it your children, Decius. Decius was more than just my son, Darius. He was, and then she's cut off, right? I'm not sure if they're implying that Decius was Darius's son, but they have, their names both start with a D and end with an S. So I think, yeah, probably Decius was Darius's son. Um... And this might be when Darius realizes this as well. Um, but but I, but it could also be that Decius is someone else, that he's the son of someone else who's important, but I don't know. I think Decius is probably Darius' son. I think that's pretty much what the comic is trying to tell us. And that's the final page, finally. So read the dialogue. And then notice something important. You see that amulet that's glinting at us so subtly around the neck of the second in command whose name I have immediately forgotten? You see that amulet? You recognize it, right? I hope you recognize it because it's this amulet. It's the one that she picked up from the city uh, that was po poisoned by Singed. I'm not sure what exactly that means. But she gave this amulet to this woman. And I think that means something important. I think that means she matters somehow. I'm not sure how, though, because I don't think she's Coletta's daughter. And I don't think she's Darius's daughter either. That would be kind of weird. But maybe she is. Like, there's something clearly important about this girl whose name I should really look up so I can actually remember what the fuck she's called. Invetia. There we go. But yeah, this final panel, this is what this whole comic has been about. This is what it's about. That's th this panel is the entire moral and 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 thematic resolution to the comic because Darius is cradling his childhood friend, his lover, probably the mother of his son in his arms as she dies horribly saddened by what's going on like this is a very tender moment this is a b brilliantly realized pose you can really see the he's holding on to her for dear life kind of thing going on as the person who killed the woman he loved walks away holding the banner of Noxus the city that he serves like that is some excellent use of imagery and it's it's brilliantly put together with the writing and i think that works gangbusters i think that works fantastically and yeah that's that's pretty much the end of that comic so we're gonna go back and look at the credits um as we fade out this video has been over an hour long because i can talk a lot about comics and art and maybe that was a little bit too much you can let me know in the comments whether you know <laughs> this was way too long to spend reading a single comic or if you would like me to do something similar the next time riot releases a comic that is uh, worth spending some time going through i hope you've enjoyed my little breakdown of the visuals and of the art style and of of, of all the stuff that's going on uh, in this comic and i hope you will remember always to credit the creators of comics and stuff and artwork that you post uh, on the internet it's important Remember the people who bring this stuff to you. And my name has been TB Sky, and you can subscribe for more of this if that's what you want. And I suppose I shall see you next time.